All right, traders, this is Mike here with the watch this video for Monday, March 25th. Quick reminder, the market is closed on this upcoming Friday, so it's a holiday week. Certainly could affect the volume. Um, let's glance at the SPY. We gapped up on Thursday and it had a kind of a narrow narrow range on the day, but a sell off. And the, again, same thing on Friday. So um, intraday has not been you know great as far as the overall market. We, we tend to uh, put in these narrow choppy ranges lately on an intraday basis. Um, anyway, having said that, I'm going to give a hat tip, big hat tip to Jacob KL in chat for um, giving a great post on CGC on Friday. You can see the big rip, but let's go to five minute candles and look at the last two days. So on Thursday, it topped out at 494. Look up here and when I hover over a candle, this right here was um, Thursday's high and it was 494, right? And then the opening candle on Friday, also 494. You'll see it up there again when I hover over it. Jacob typed in the room. Um, hey, you know, like about five minutes into the session, he pointed out, topped at 494 this morning, also topped at 494 yesterday, you know, which would have been Thursday, which meets our parameters for what we call the two-day high break. A little bit, a little bit weird of a name, you know, because it's, uh, it's really breaking its own intraday high on Friday, but also matched the same number for Thursday. You see that a lot. It's one of our most powerful setups, I would argue. Um, so the entry would have been 495. Again, great post by Jacob. Um, and man, it went all the way to basically eight bucks. Um, I'm also going to give a hat tip to me <laughs> because I'm doing my, um, my new experiment that I've been working on. Over the mic on Friday, I called AISP as meeting those parameters, right? I got long. See this little bottoming tail here? I got long, um, which was what I mentioned in chat, over this candle. Um, 778 right there. My stop, I just put the hard stop in for a long time, maybe an hour. I thought I'm going to stop out, but I never did. Then I got this nice push and then this nice end of day push and ended up having a really nice trade in AISP. I'm loving that experiment. So those, those are my two highlights. You guys know I just throw out a couple highlights from each day. I don't go into everything that was posted. So if somebody posted something amazing and you didn't make the video, it's certainly not on purpose. It's more of a time constraint. Um, don't feel slighted. I love the teamwork in there. All right. Um, let me slide this over in case somebody's seeing one of my videos for the first time. Shorthand version, we are day traders, but we start with the daily chart, right? I mean, I'm in cash every night, but we always look at daily charts to give us an idea of what to look for the next day on an intraday basis. All right. I don't like holding overnight. Um, A N G H will be one of them. It's had a really nice two day run, not just some random run either, but it had a nice headline, right? So for me, that's an important ingredient. I don't want it to be one of these uh, low float pumps. So you had a nice headline here um, and it had a couple days up and now you got one day down. You guys know I like to see them come down to the moving averages, but you also know that uh, that volume was very low on Friday. So I'm not opposed to saying, hey, we might have one red day and it's back off to the races. So for that reason, it goes on watch. CGC, obviously great call by Jacob on Friday. Um, big move. But maybe these pot stocks uh, continue. Speaking of pot stocks, I went ahead and threw ACB on there and FLGC. So I've actually got three pot stocks. They're probably all going to move together, uh, but I got them all on watch. All right, CRDF. Um, by the way, I had a nice trade in this one on Friday. I was watching the five-minute pullback that I posted. Let me go to two days. Um, so this had this one just put in an opening. This was the opening candle right here. It put in an opening range breakout. Um, but it had only traded like 30 or 40,000 shares. So I didn't take it. I didn't post it. I didn't call it nothing. And then I just watched the thing start climbing, right? So I was waiting for a nice pullback. Um, by the way, it topped out at 606 after this run. Let me go back to the daily real quick and point out about a week ago, it topped out at 606, right? So I knew, and this is the reason for this call, I knew I liked it back through 606 because you had a break of, you know, Friday's earlier high and a break of that high from about a week ago, but it had come a long way to get there, right? So I would have never taken it when it was straight up like this over 606. But since I knew that it topped out at that high, you know, like a week ago and then again this morning, I loved the pullback idea, right? So I told everybody I was watching the fives buy zone. It just kept going lower and lower and lower. And we got a nice fives buy setup 
um, which would have been over this candle, and that's how I took it, 569. Sometimes you get that bottoming tail below the 520, right? You get that in the reversal, and I, when I see that, I'll take that five-minute buy setup every time um, on a stock that I already like there, right? So I got long there, and then I actually ended up selling when it got back to the high day versus having to buy it when it was extended, right? So, and this, this makes sense that it broke the highs and didn't do much, right? Because again, it was so extended on intraday basis. Um, so I had a really nice trade there as well. Um, hopefully some of you got that with me, but it's extended to me now. Um, but it's such a strong stock that I think it still deserves a spot on the watch list. Just, you know, make sure you understand that it's extended. Now this EH has had a really nice move from here to here, sold off big, and then it's right back up near recent highs. This thing's very strong. They did have a nice headline the other day, so I am going to put that on watch. GDS, um, you can't see the 200-day on this chart, but it's somewhere up here in the 970s, I think. I did not mean to do that. Pan that back out. Um, anyway, uh, kind of, it's getting some extra volume, too. So it's kind of a sleeper pick, though, right? I don't know that I'd really call it an in-play stock. TKO had the big rip and a couple days um, that kind of flagging after the big rip. Worth noting that it topped out at 87.50 here and topped out at 87.50 again on Friday. So certainly a level to watch through 87.50. Hopefully we get a nice intraday setup for that. AISP, I already talked about my trade. And by the way, another thing I loved about AIS, AISP after the initial sell-off on Friday morning was that it was right at the daily 20, right? That made me like that setup even more. Again, it took a while to get going, um, but it ended up being a really nice trade. So now you've got this huge move, a couple day pullback, and then a nice green candle. Um, so this one could continue higher. So it goes back on watch. LAC gapped up back here and topped out at 765. Now it's starting to curl back up. It's certainly interesting over that 765, but maybe we get an intraday setup. I like the looks of this chart. Um, SMR, again, ugly chart because it had a really big move and then just off a cliff, but you've got four days in a row down. It's just overdue for a bounce. And um, I'll take an overdue bounce play setup the same as any other setup because I'm a day trader, right? Um, and then SOUN, a recent high flyer that's, you know, straight down. I don't think it's broken a previous day. Since this hit 1025, it hasn't broken a previous day's high. Then you had the gap down. This is kind of a decent setup for a snapback bounce, especially if AI plays um, catch a bit. All right. Anyway, that's it for me. We'll add gappers like we always do in the pre-market. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I'll see you guys in chat.